Imagine that you're on a game show and here is your last task. There are three doors in front of you. Behind one of them there is a car. Behind the other two there are ghosts. You pick a door to open. Let's say the first door. The host of the show, who knows behind which door the car is, opens another door. Let's say it's door 3. Behind it there is a goat. After that the game host tells you, now your final choice. Do you want to switch your choice of doors? Do you think it would be in your interest to change your choice and pick door 2 instead? I'll give you some time to think, and you make your decision. Have you made your choice? This problem is called a Monty Hall problem. There is named after the host of a game show where this situation happened. Oh, yeah. And hear what PhDs and mathematicians say. Switching the door doesn't make any sense. When you picked it first, the chances of picking the door with the car were one-third. Whatever door you choose, the chances are the same. After the host opened the door, the odds of picking the door with the car are 50-50. But when Marilyn Vusevan, the most intelligent woman on the planet with an IQ of 228, was asked this question in her Sunday column in 1990, she replied, Yes, you should switch. The first door has one-third chance of winning, but the second door has a two-third chance. Her response caused a huge outburst of negative comments. What? Mrs. Vusava received thousands of angry letters, 90% of which were telling her how wrong she was and how she lacked basic mathematical knowledge. Mm. Many of those letters were from mathematicians and PhDs. Marilyn wrote a response to them, defending her answer. The winning odds of one-third of the first choice can't go up to one second. If you are still not persuaded and think that probabilities change after the second door is open, let's just consider all possible scenarios. There are three doors, and the car can be behind each one of them with equal possibility. So three scenarios are equally likely. The car is behind the first door, the car is behind the second door, and the car is behind the third door. Now let's say there are two players. One is a switcher, the one who will switch the door after the door with the goat is open. The other one is a non-switcher, the one who will stick to the first choice. Now let's see what happens in each case. Let's say the car is behind the first door. Both people choose the first door. The host opens either one of the remaining two doors. It doesn't matter which one, because there are goats behind both. The switcher will now switch to the other door, and the non-switcher will stick to the first one. In this case, the non-switcher will get the car. Professors 1, Marilyn 0. But let's consider the other two scenarios. Now the car is behind the second door. Once again, both players pick the first door. The host opens the third door, the one with the goat. The first player switches his choice and wins, and the second player sticks to the first one and loses. 1-1. One, one. The last case is when the car is behind the third door. The players pick the first door. This time the host opens the second door, because the second goat is there. The first player switches to the third door and wins. The second player sticks to the first door and loses. So the non-switching players win only one time, in the scenario when they pick the right door right away, which happens in one-third of cases. The switchers lose in only that one scenario, when they pick the right door right away and then give it up later. But they win in the other two scenarios, in both cases when the car is behind one of the other two doors. Mrs. Vusavan suggested another brilliant way to modify the problem to make it even clearer. Imagine that there are not three doors, but a million. The car is behind one of them, and you have to make your choice. Say you pick the first door. Hmm. Then the host opens all the doors except door number 777,777. All of them had goats, so the car is either behind the door you picked or behind the door number 777,777. Will you switch? Of course you will! Oh, yeah. When you picked the door for the first time, the odds to pick the right one were one in a million. 
Now, when you make another choice between doors 1 and 777,777, your door still has the odds of 1 in a million, but door number 777,777 has accumulated the odds of all the other doors that were open. The case with three doors is the same, but less obvious. But who is this brilliant woman who made a monkey out of most professors across the country? Oh. Marilyn Vusava was born on 11th of August in 1946 in Missouri. She has her mother's last name and, interestingly, Sava means a person of learning in French. Mm. Marilyn is a descendant of the famous physicist Ernst Mach. Oh. She took her first IQ test when she was 10 years old, and she scored 228. Just for comparison, on average, an adult has an IQ of 100. Her parents knew of the girl's exceptional intelligence, but they kept it a secret from the public, so that the girl could live a normal life. The girl's dream was to become a writer. As a teenager, she was writing for local newspapers using pseudonyms. She wanted to become a full-time writer, but to do this she needed financial security. Young Marilyn dropped out of college after two years because she got bored and started to invest. Within five years, her investments started to support her enough to let her fully dedicate herself to writing. Yes! In 1985, the Guinness Book of World Records obtained Marilyn's IQ scores from the Mega Society a society of people with one in a million intelligence scores. They published them, and it made Marilyn Vusava famous. She received a lot of media attention. A parade magazine wrote an article about her, and it was so popular that they offered her to write her own column. Of course, Marilyn used this chance. She started the column Ask Marilyn, where she was answering tricky questions, solving riddles, and publishing her own. This is exactly where she gave her famous answer to the Monty Hall problem. But it wasn't the only controversial problem she solved. Here is one more. Hmm. A shopkeeper says that she has two new beagles, but she doesn't know if they're male or female. You only want a male, so she calls a fellow who's bathing them. Turns out that at least one of them is a male. What is the probability that the other one is a male too? I'll give you some time to think. Here is what most people think. There are three possible scenarios. The two beagles are two males, two females, or a male and a female. Since one of them is a male, then it's now two possible options, two males or a pair. Therefore, the probability of two males is one second. Still, Marilyn Vusava replied, one out of three. This baffled the audience. But the key is that two puppies are different, and it's important to differentiate between them. For example, there is a puppy A and a puppy B. Now, how many combinations are there? Both being females is one, both being males is two. Now, A is male and B is female, three. And lastly, A is a female and B is a male, four. So, there are three different cases, when at least one is a male. So, when we know that at least one is a male, getting both males has the probability of one-third. In over 35 years of solving thousands of riddles from her readers, Mrs. Vusava only made two mistakes and she described them in her column. Now, Mrs. Vusava is 76 years old and she's still writing her Ask Marilyn column, so you can even check it out. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.